Open up your Bibles, please, to James chapter 5 and Daniel chapter 11. With all the chaos going on and what the news is feeding you about the war that's going on, or the next strain, or the new disease that might pop out, and they're distracting you with things going on in Hollywood with Elon Musk, and all the attention is on Trump for some weird reason, always trying to uh, nitpick and point out his faults or his issues. But that is all a distraction. That's all a distraction from what the deeper inside people, those in power, are doing. And right under your nose, what they are doing is taking over the food economy. And what they're doing right under your noses is trying to receive more power to control you people. The Bible prophesied that one day in the tribulation there's going to be a great darth and famine throughout the land. But how are you going to reach that point? Well, those minions of the wicked one who are behind the scenes, they are deliberately starting things up. And we're going to look at some scriptural portions that will show that demonic elites, that they will take control of the food supply. And people are actually starving during the tribulation. Why is that happening? Control the person's food when they're starving to death. You'll control the whole world. You might say, how so? Because when the mark of the beast comes out in Revelation chapter 13, the verse says you cannot buy or sell except you have the mark of the beast. Yeah. So part of the Antichrist control and the demonic elite system is to make sure they control your very own food so that they can very much control your own life so that they can be dictators. Now, how soon are we reaching these proportions? Well, sooner than you think. The title of the article from The Hill, UN warns of famines of biblical proportions within the next year. And actually, from this article, this was supposed to happen, believe it or not, last year. This was supposed to happen last year. Well, if we were to buy past this, then how much sooner are we reaching the famine of biblical proportions? How much longer can we keep pushing away the inevitable, right? So this article title shows that we are literally in danger mode of famine. It's only a matter of time. If we were able to somewhat dodge it this year, I, much, I wonder how much sooner. This is from NPR, and remember, I'm quoting you mainstream news, so this is not some kind of conspiratorial or amateur blog post. This is from NPR, title of their article is, Record Number of People Worldwide Are Moving Towards Starvation, UN Warns. Uh, let me know if I'm cut out of bounds, okay? This is from David Beasley, who's the head of the UN World Food Program itself, okay? You know what he said in its latest analysis shows that a record of 345 million acutely hungry people are marching to the brink of starvation. A 25% increase from 276 million at the start of 2022. And, you know, the number stood at 135 million before the, the disease that we had in early 2020. You notice a huge increase from 135 from two years ago, ever since the disease came out, and then it just jumped to 345? Wow. This is too fast, don't you think so? For something to be a natural cause, it makes you wonder if there's something deliberately done to push the famine. Because this don't sound natural, right, when you hear the numbers? This sounds a little bit too fast. But let's take it for granted that it's natural. Let's take it for granted that it's natural. However, keep in mind that we do have a right 
to be suspicious and to question yeah. and not just easily trust whatever the news media says or what mainstream people say about, well, it's, these are all natural causes. When you look at numbers, we do have a right to question. So that's all I'm simply doing. Now, this is from the Russian newspaper source. This is actually from Russia itself. RT, all right? A lot of you know the RT News. The title of their article is Global Famine, Likely This Year, Putin Aid. That's what they said. Washington's attempts to take over Ukraine's grain may lead to a food crisis, according to the Russian official. It is important that in the conditions, for example, of a global famine that will occur closer to autumn, by the end of this year, all over the world, Russia should not suffer, but be full, fully provided with food. That's what uh, Russian sources are saying. So, even Russia itself is admitting that there is a huge famine coming, and even up to, po to the point of this year. Now, if people want to argue about Russian propaganda, and you know, Russia always likes to blame the UN, the UN likes to blame on Russia, and what we see here is global elitists like to blame each other. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah. However, both of them agree with this one thing, which should be alarming. That is, a famine is headed our way sometime. Wow. And people are going to starve, and this is just the beginning. This is from the Epoch Times, and the Epoch Times, I'm not going to say that it's a reliable source because a lot of liberals hate it, but they quote a lot of experts here. So you can look at this article and look at what the experts say. And the title of the article is, Beijing Takeover of United Nations Presents Existential Threat to U.S. And actually, if you study that article, it is very disturbing on how many Chinese officials or people connected to China have uh, power seats within universities, within our government, within UN. And this has been demonstrated throughout the past two years. I've given you so many sources on that, so that's a no-brainer. And you can do a simple Google search if you're upset or you don't believe me. You research yourself. Don't believe me. You research, research it yourself and look at how many articles are popping out on that. There is absolutely no doubt that there is some kind of uh, Chinese take over and remember China is ingrained with a lot of communism but America with this so uh, socialist turning communist ideologies that's why they can find things that they can agree upon with these Chinese officials and work together with them but then later on it so happened in some universities they found out they were actually spies <laughs> yeah come on in liberal universities. Oh, you wonder how they got in, right? You wonder how they got in? They believe the same belief as you did, stupid liberal professor you. Stupid liberal government official you. Dumb Americans. Yes, dumb Americans. All right, I live in America. Dumb Americans. America thinks they're so small. They're top of the food chain. They're just dumber as they can be, man. <laughs> But they're controlling, believe it or not, a lot of the food supply. Yeah. A lot of the food supply. So if you read that article, it's going to frighten you a bit. This is even more so in another article from the Epoch Times, title of their article, UN World Economic Forum Behind Global War on Farmers Experts. Yeah. They say Agenda 2030 development goals at root of sustainability policies that could lead to food shortages. What, what's going on here? Well, if you recall from other videos that I've demonstrated and taught you, the World Economic Forum, what they want to do is bring a better paradise to the world. So in order to bring a better paradise to the world, there's got to be more control to those in power. Yeah. The more that they can keep track and the more power that they have with advancement of technology, why do you think they're going to neglect our food supply? Because that's a very important part of human society. So they're not just going to advance technology and take control over that. 
they have to take control and advance and dabble with your food supply. They'll have to do that. And if you read this article, it's not the article itself that I'm relying upon, but actually they name a lot of experts. And they give these names and then they give the background of really what's going on. And like I said, it will frighten you. So it seems like that the farmers, remember, that's where we get all our food, obviously. Where we get all our food is right here from farmers, from farmland. Now, if the Antichrist wants to rule over the common ordinary people, then he has to go for your food supply, as Revelation 13 talked about, right? You cannot buy or sell, you cannot eat, unless you have the mark of the beast. So, he has to take control over the food supply, and where you're going to get your food supply, common sense, is go to the farmlands, go to the farms, where they produce the food, give birth, plant food for you. The Antichrist needs to control it, the global elitists who are part of the Antichrist system, and that means they will have to control it. And that means the World Economic Forum, they definitely should have a big hand in it. And from that article, from the experts, they've explained that it is happening. The World Economic Forum, they're taking a lot of the farmland. But this is uh, not new to us for a lot of people who heard about Bill Gates. He already uh, bought up a lot of farmland for himself. And he's, uh, a hoard uh, he's all of a sudden buying stuff and people are wondering, why is he buying stuff? If you actually go to the uh, original article from, I think it's called the Land Times or something like a land report. There it is, the land report. The title of the article from the official land report where people want to get the current updates on what's going on with soil, land, and who's buying it and who's controlling it, who's owning it. It says right here, Bill Gates America's top farmland owner. Oh, now isn't it strange? People were always concerned about Bill Gates ever since two years ago. And years ago behind it, they were claiming that he's one of the elites that, to watch out for. And people are saying, well, it's not a big deal. But then when the disease happened around a few years ago, he got way more attention. He all of a sudden switched his attention on that. Then all of a sudden he switches his attention on food? Yeah. I think that this is not a guy that, uh, that, is, very, uh, that is as innocent as you think. Yeah. I think that there should be red flags going on. Why is he doing that? That's good. Why is he buying all of this kind of stuff? Unless the scriptures talked about in Daniel chapter 11, look at right there, that the Antichrist elitists, he will have a group of elites who will own food and land. And you think that this is a guy that, oh, he's not a big deal? You don't know your scriptures. You don't really pay attention to the current times. All right? Forget Gates then. Forget he even exists. My question to you is, do you even look at certain globalists? Yeah, that's good. Or pretend there is none. Uh -huh. In the scriptures, there has to be. Look at Daniel chapter 11. This is the Antichrist, there's no doubt, when you look at verse 21. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdoms by flatteries. That's the Antichrist. He's going to make a covenant and then take over the people. Notice in verse 39, 39. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom she, he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many. Look at that. The Antichrist himself is going to cause them, see, these rulers over here, these rulers to rule over many, and shall what? Divide the land for gain. 
It's the Antichrist's job to divide out property and land and give it to his own rulers, his own globalists, his own elites. So if you look at this uh, chart over here, we looked at Daniel chapter 11, the riches of this world, which is on these arrows, they're going to make riches out of farmland right here. And they're going to make riches out of it. One of them is Bill Gates, but looky, looky, there are several names here. The Rockefellers? Sure. And you wouldn't believe the title of their article. The title of their article is Reset the Table. Part of the Great Reset. Isn't that funny? And they deliberately title like that. Reset the Table. Meeting the moment to transform the U.S. food system. The Rockefeller Foundation. July 28, 2020. The Rockefellers are getting involved. And that's another name people have been keeping an eye out about globalists. And those behind the scenes. And those who studied the bankers and... Those who seem to be on top cannot neglect this name, BlackRock. Mm -hmm. BlackRock is a huge name. And are they owning up and buying up property? My friend, they've been doing that for years, ever since 2008. <laughs> the title of the article from the New York Times, Food is Gold, So Billions Invested in Farming. That's the title of their article. And you know what they mention right here? BlackRock. They mentioned BlackRock as one of them. They've been doing this a long time ago. While people during 2008 have been idiotic like Laodiceans, enjoying the machinery of America and getting brainwashed by the liberal school system and news media and the current government system, the dark system of this world, just following along like fools. While those behind the scenes have been prepping, stealing rights, power, Property, food for themselves, prepping for the big thing. Believe it or not, the Vatican. Have you, ever, have you ever thought about this? Some of you never realized this before, but did you ever look at some sites to tour in the Silicon Valley or in this area? And why is it the Roman Catholic Church has several pieces of property that tourists would like to visit. You know, they're the ones who buy property and land the most. One of the people who buy the most. This is from Bezinga, and the title of the article is, this is from Yahoo Finance. Who owns more land? Bill Gates? McDonald's? Or the Catholic Church? They say right here, you might have not realized, you might not have realized that the Catholic Church owns lots of real estate. Which of these billion dollar entities owns more of what might be considered the most precious commodity on earth, land? Benzinga did the research and the results might surprise you. All right, this is the case for Bill Gates. Co-founder is largely considered the biggest private owner of farmland in the U.S. with nearly 270,000 acres. Here's the one for the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church owns 177 million acres of land. Wow. If this number sounds astonishing to you, you're not alone. This report comes from Yale Climate Connections and a story about land ownership by the Catholic Church. Oh, uh, it seems to make more sense when you go to Revelation chapter 18, huh? Now, your hand is at James 5. Keep it there. But the Bible demands... That the Catholic Church, the whore of Revelation, Amen. which Amen. Babylon, Mystery Babylon, which is the Catholic Church, Amen. has so much food income for herself, the delicacies of the food for herself. Look at Revelation chapter 18. And merchants need her. Merchants need her. Look at Revelation chapter 18. The Word of God reads at verse... 9. 
And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her. Look at verse 14, 14. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. This is about the judgment that God gives to Babylon, the Roman Catholic Church, the whore of Revelation chapter 17 and 18, and God judges her and takes away her delicious goods her food supply, but also a lot of her possessions and income. Now look at James 5. Amen. James chapter 5. Your hand's already there. Yeah. The Bible prophesied that in the last days, the rich elites, they will be able to hoard up food for themselves, and they are going to persecute the righteous. And the righteous, those that are poor, are going to become slaves for these rich elites. And these poor people, they're going to be starving. There's a huge famine going around. And then the rich are going to hoard the food for themselves. And God tells the righteous who are poor to wait for his coming. And he will bring in the food for them. But look at James chapter 5. Look at the interpretation here. Verse 1. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl, for your miseries that shall come upon you. God's declaring judgment on the rich elites here. And these rich elites are in the last days. The tribulation. Look at verse 3. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for when? The last days. So this is rich elites during the last days. I told you so. But look what they're doing. Farmland. Verse 4. Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by what? Fraud. These are, these, they're buying up property. These are fraudulent crooks, man. Wow. Crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the years of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts. Why? They're buying up property right here. BlackRock, Bill Gates, Rockefellers, Vatican and more rich elites that will come out. You have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. But what does God say? Verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. See that? When He comes down at the second advent. The second advent, which is at the end of the tribulation. So this is end times context here. Behold, the husbandman waiteth, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. See that? So you're going to get your fruit out of the earth. You're going to get your food eventually. But just be patient, God tells the poor saints. You'll notice that at verse, let's see right here. Verse 17, the context is famine, the fruit of the earth. See, that's why they have to be patient and wait and pray. Verse 17, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth uh, gave, brought forth her fruit. See, the context is... In this passage, God is telling the saints to wait and to be patient and to pray during your time of famine, just like Elijah went through his time of famine and prayed and waited. And then the Lord eventually brought forth the fruit. So this is very true right here. These rich elites, they're buying up the farmland for themselves, gaining money off of it. But what does this arrow have to do with what in the world? Did I write that right? Cannibalism? Where are you getting at, Pastor? This might be disturbing. This might, sh this will shock you. Now, there's a person who wrote an article. It's titled uh, Manufactured Famine, a list of every food plant explosion in the past three years in North America and Mexico. Now, you can take it or leave it. I'm not telling you to believe, believe whatever the guy's saying, but he pulled up a Google Docs 
And if you look at that Google Docs, he pointed out every article of locations around the world where all of a sudden, this is very weird and strange, that these food plants had accidental explosions and catastrophes. Now, uh, dear old trusty Snoopy or Snopes, trustworthy people like him and those people, they'll say these are natural occurrences that happen because of the weather and etc. But when you have, when you have 2019 10 incidents, and then 2020 26 incidents, and then 2021 33 incidents, and then 2022, 61 incidents within four months? Wow. That's crazy. Natural coincidence. And, oh, uh, don't fool me. This is a guy who, this is, these are people who, are, who have to have a complete bias, complete goofballs and idiots who want to make sure nothing exists. Because I bet you, if it was a Trump elitist behind this and then these liberals found a pattern uh -huh. guess what they're going to do they're going to pull out just like they did before a Russian conspiracy there's a clear pattern they're going to change their bias yeah. because there's a stark contrast of numbers that you can see this is not just something like a natural occurrence this is some kind of clear design pattern unless you're an evolutionist you know it's natural occurrence for one out of a quadrillion you know to the uh, strongest power that we all existed by natural occurrence there is no design argument right here it's for fairy tales for fools the devil use that where students are so used to that kind of thinking of natural occurrences that now you can have evil designers behind the scenes yeah. getting away with stuff. Wow. wow, that's good. Yeah, I hate evolution. Did I ever say that? Amen. I hate evolution. I'm sorry. Amen. It's a wicked system that has damned billions to hell. Yeah. Damned billions to hell. Now. This article, I'm not going to uh, read all of it, but <laughs> they give links of the different news sources and all these food plants where something bad happened and you're like, how can this much happen within a short amount of time here? So within 2000, he goes from 2000, he got a list from 2020, 19 to 2000, 2021. Let me see if I can uh, scroll down. It's not allowing me to scroll down through, uh, through my phone object, but it, uh, it is cut. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, make sure you always catch me and let me know, okay? But within four months, when you get 60 something, there's something suspicious. If you look at a lot of these news articles, do a Google research too. You dig up yourself about food plants being destroyed, fire catching on and all that, and look at how many, and look at some of these articles of people trying to find out and investigating whether it was an accident or somebody deliberate did it. That's the title of their articles. They put, they put it there, they wondered if it was something deliberate. So you do the research yourself. And it's very strange. It's too good to be true. It's too good to be true that everything's a natural occurrence. Okay, let's assume something, del something is designing this. Because there's just too many going off. What's the goal? Well, like I told you before, if they control more of the food supply and other independent food plants, farmlands that weren't bought by the elites have been destroyed, what are markets, what are people going to get their food supply from? Come on, use your head. You're going to get it from these rich elitists. Then. And when you buy it off of them, they get rich and fat, and especially during the tribulation when that happens, they get to control you. They get to control your food supply. But this needs to happen more and more and more. So we need to go through more stages. Can something like that happen? I don't know if some of you have heard of this. Have you ever heard of a Holdemore before? What is Holdemore, Pastor? I never heard of such a thing. 
That's part of control right here. This is a real historical fact. From Holdemore, the real historical fact is communists have done this. In Russia, the communists, during the 1920s, there was a man-made famine. There was a famine that did happen, but there was a point during that time that it was man-made. And it was from the communists. Just research yourself. The article reads here, the person writes, and then you can confirm whether it's true or not by your own research from Holdemore. I'm going to be reading completely from uh, what this writer says. He says, Lenin's Bolsheviks party believed peasants were actively trying to undermine the war effort. And by taking their food away, it reduced their strength. As Lenin declared, let the peasants starve. The result was to force them to resort to trading human flesh on the black market. Wow. As a matter of fact, here's a, I can show you the photos if some of you are interested, but there is one photo right here, quote, this is the gray photo of a couple that shows how starving people turn to cannibalism to survive during a man-made famine in 1920s Russia. A Russian couple sell human body parts on a market. People of Russia began to eat and sell human limbs due to the food struggle during the Russian famine of 1921. Uh, when did you learn this in liberal, uh -huh. liberal socialist, aka communist history classes? They don't like to tell you about this stuff. That's right. Oh, look at Europe, look at Europe, you know. They refuse to look at history, look at Russia, look at China, you know. Yeah. Look at all the other places. More than five million people died during the catastrophe, which began in 1921 and lasted through 1922. Wow. Another one right here. Russian academics have previously researched and cataloged examples of cannibalism and corpse eating, and in one account described how a woman refused to give over her husband's dead body because she was using it for meat. This will, this history, you, you don't know your history? Look at 2 Kings chapter 6. Go to 2 Kings chapter 6. This is not new. I don't know why this is shocking to you. This has happened before. What men learn from history is what, church? Men never learn from history. Men never learn from history. You guys are just, you guys are just so, so blinded by the machinery of this world they don't tell you this kind of stuff. You don't know your history. And that's why you're... You know why America is headed for hell and why it's derailing? Why the train on that railroad is about to fall off a cliff so fast? Because people inside the train are not looking at the pattern, their past, their history of what happened. They're just in there, just going along with the ride. Blinded fools nowadays. You don't study your history. You're just going with the flow, with society work, what's going to happen next, trust our government system, whatever the mu news media shows about, you know, what's going on with Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, and that just took up all the news time for you. And Trump's a problem, Trump's the evil villain, Trump's a wicked one, Trump is this. I mean, you are so blinded. You are so blinded, you're not looking at what you're headed to. Yeah, that's good. Look at 2 Kings chapter 6. This is, this is like utterly disgusting on what happened here. If you look at 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 25. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cab of uh, dove's dung for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, Your blood will turn cold. 
This woman said unto me, Give thy son, that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son, that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes. Yeah, that happened before. It, didn't, it wasn't new during Lenin's time. That happened before with women. And guess what? It will happen in the tribulation. And it happened several times in the past. Go to Lamentations chapter 2. Lamentations chapter 2. Let me keep reading here. The starving peasants were even seen digging up recently buried corpses to retrieve their flesh as well as eating grass and animals that were pre previously considered pets. This is, this, this is, whoa. The police took no action as cannibalism was considered a legitimate method of survival. Eventually, aid workers from America and Europe arrived, and in 1921, one wrote a stomach-churning account of what they'd seen. Quote, Families were killing and devouring fathers, grandfathers, and children. Ghastly rumors about sausages prepared with human corpses, though officially contradicted, were common. In the market among rough huckstresses swearing at each other, one heard threats to make sausages of a person. Children suffering with severe malnutrition, their stomachs bloated, and almost every bone in their body visible. And then there are pictures demonstrated here, and if you're interested, you can see some of the pictures here. But it is totally chilling, gut-wrenching, and sad. Why? So that you, the peasants, the common people, were the problem. Because remember, Russia is a huge country right there. And a lot of the people, they'll have farmlands, so starve them out. Then their strength weakens. Lenin knew about the strength of the common people, the poor people. Why? Because that's how communism took over. Because they want to topple the rich elites. So then communism's ideology was pleasant to the poor. Pleasant to the farmers, the peasants, etc. That, hey, we should all have an equal level of wealth and distribution. So we need a government to enforce that. Oh, but Lenin, never, uh, but Lenin and those communist leaders never told you. Uh, we're the government. We're the government in power. Who makes sure everyone has an equal level of wealth? So then, it was the power of the people, the poor, that toppled the rich elites, and then the communists took over. But then, the communists, they don't want that. They're scared of those poor people, so we need to control those poor people. Otherwise, they're just going to topple our government next, like we did with the previous rich elites before. Come on, you don't know that? You don't study history? We're so ignorant here in America. We're just fools, and we don't see this. Y'all looking at me like a tree full of owls, and you think that I'm just making stuff up, or that's just my conclusion. No, you just don't study history. That's right. That's right. And prove me wrong. Study history. Do your research yourself. You don't, do, do you? No, you just watch TV. Come on. Believe what they say. That's right. Like a bunch of gobbledygooks right there in the middle of school class. You just nod your head. Whatever the guy with glasses says, and I bet you those glasses are fake. He just puts them on because he wants to pretend that he's smart. That's good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to look at the book of... Let's not start a fight. Let's not start a war. All right. Look at Lamentations chapter 2, verse 20. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 20. The Bible says... Behold, O Lord, con and consider to whom thou hast done this. Shall the woman eat their fruit and children of a span long? That happened. That did happen before. Tragic and sad. And that didn't just happen in the Old Testament. That didn't just happen during the time of the communists. And I bet you you can find more historical incidents 
But it will happen in the tribulation. You know that? In the tribulation, as these rich elites control more of your food supply and the people are starving to death, they're going to turn them into cannibals. You don't believe me? Look at Revelation chapter 6. Look at all these verses. We're going to compare Scripture. This is one of those deep doctrines that you never learned in other churches. Revelation chapter 6. And then we'll look at verse 9. Revelation chapter 6. And then we'll read verse 9. And then I want you to look at those other verses that I wrote out here. Leviticus chapter 8. Leviticus chapter 8. And then Isaiah chapter 6. I trust that the onliners can see that. I'm going to move that. Okay. So Isaiah chapter 6 and Leviticus chapter 8. Leviticus 8 again and Isaiah 6 and then Revelation chapter 6. Why are you going through so many scriptures? That's your problem. You're not used to researching yourself like I told you before. You're not used to studying yourself like I told you before. And that's why people in churches, they don't even look at their Bibles. They just listen, listen to some guy on a screen or to some apostate pastor and they just nod their heads. It's a shame. They don't look at their Bibles and see for themselves. You wonder why America ended up in its mess? In a generation that they're robots and not studying and researching themselves. And we boast ourselves to be a higher educated community? You nuts! <laughs> Revelation chapter 6. Verse 9, the Bible says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, so notice the temple altar, mm -hmm. the altar of the temple of Jerusalem, there's people killed, the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. What, why were they killed at the temple altar? You know what they do at the temple altar? Well, first of all, go to Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6. The Bible will tell you that the people who were killed on the altar, there's a reason behind it. They ate them. They ate them. Look at Isaiah chapter 6. And Isaiah 6 is about the timeline of the tribulation. So what's going to happen at the timeline of the tribulation? Verse 13, But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be what? Eaten as a tail tree and as an oak, whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves. Okay, so God's saying, whatever this tenth amount is, this tenth amount is going to be eaten as if you're eating the substance from the tree itself. So that's pretty literal right there. Okay, who is this group eaten? Keep reading. So the what? Holy, holy seed shall be the substance thereof. That's the holy seed of Israel. That's the Jews, the Jewish seed. Wow, the people, the people are eaten up at the tribulation. Why? You can guess. What do you do on the temple altar when you kill something there? Come on, you don't have to be a uh, rocket scientist. Look at Leviticus A. You don't need to know math. It's so obvious what you do when you kill something at the altar. You behead it and you eat it. Look at Leviticus chapter 8, verse 14. The Bible says, And he brought the bullock for the sin offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the where? The head of the bullock for the sin offering. Look what you do with this thing. Verse 20, And he cut the ram into pieces, and Moses burnt the head and the pieces and the fat. Look at the very next verses, 31, 31. And Moses said unto Aaron and to his sons, Boil the flesh at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and there eat it with the bread. Um, did you forget what's happening at the tribulation? How do you die? Beheading you. Yeah, beheaded. Yes, sir. That's good. Wow, there's definitely a connection. Go to Psalm 79 and Ezekiel 39. Psalm 79... And Ezekiel 39. 
as you turn to these passages, think about this. In the tribulation, the psalmist writes, in the tribulation there's going to be so many dead bodies that actually they're not going to bury them. Okay? So if you're not going to bury these dead bodies in the tribulation, what are you going to do with it, especially when famine happens at the tribulation? Yeah. See, it's just common sense logic. You can guess. There, you don't need a Bible verse that plainly says, in the tribulation, everyone's going to be a cannibal. No, the Bible don't have to say that. The Bible just shows you verses, and then when you connect the verses, you come up with the proper conclu conclusion. It's just easy guesswork. It's just an obvious conclusion. If Psalm 79 says, there's going to be so many dead bodies in the tribulation, they're not going to bury it, and Revelation says there's going to be a huge famine in the land, people are starving, what do you think people are going to do with all those dead bodies when you're starving to death? Especially when you hear that, I heard that human flesh is really good, better than chicken. Hey, I'm not making that up. There are some people who actually, some researchers who said that. I don't know if they're cannibals or what, or what they did. But th that's a very disturbing saying. And if that's really true, come on, you ain't going to be no fool. What are you going to do if you're starving to death and there's dead bodies that aren't buried? You're going to eat them. Psalm 79, verse 1 through 3. 1. O God, the heathen are come into thine inheritance. Thy holy temple have they defiled. They have laid Jerusalem on heaps. The dead bodies of thy servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the heaven. The flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the earth. Their blood have they shed like water round about Jerusalem. And there was none to bury them. Now this context has to do with the tribulation. So they don't bury the bodies. So there are animals eating it. But look at Ezekiel 39. Ezekiel 39. What we read at Isaiah, people are eating them as well. But look at Ezekiel 39. You know what God's going to do? Think about this. God prepares a sacrifice at Ezekiel 39, verse 17 through 19 against the Antichrist and his armies. He says, And thou son of man, verse 17, Thus saith the Lord God, Speak unto every feathered fowl, and to every beast of the field. Assemble yourselves, and come. Gather yourselves on every side. To my what? Sacrifice. sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you. Even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that ye may what? Eat flesh and drink blood. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty, and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bullocks, and all of them fatlings, of Bashan, and ye shall eat fat till ye be full, and drink blood till ye be drunken of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. Okay, God gives them that judgment of a sacrifice where their bodies are eaten up, their blood is being drunk. Think about it. Why would God give a judgment like that? If you know your God, how does he, do, how does he perform his judgments? He performs the specific judgment for a specific reason. And if you know your Bible, God's judgment goes like this. The law of sowing and reaping. Yes, sir. You reap what you sow. If you do something bad, God's going to make sure you get the same bad thing, that ill omen, in return. Okay, if that's God's judgment of reaping and sowing, why is he having those bad people, those evil mongers, getting their flesh eaten, their blood drinking, as Allah sowing and reaping, unless they did that themselves. That's real good. Wow. Okay. Everybody want to open up an altar call and pray to the Lord, get their sins right with the Lord? That's some food for thought, and I don't mean it in a cannibalistic way, just a <laughs> metaphorical way. Some food for thought. Go to Revelation 9. Revelation 9. Revelation chapter 9. Yeah, really. <laughs> In order for the Antichrist and his government to control the food supply, would you believe it? Would you believe it? China, they're trying to blame the famine 
on Americans because they claim, and this is from the Global Times, that's the Chinese Communist News Source. Title of their article is U.S. Military-Led Insect Project Feared to be Weaponized and Risk Global Food Security, Especially in Rival Countries Near Its Biolabs. Because China, they don't want to be blamed because remember from that source that I read to you from the Epoch Times, there are Chinese Communist officials that are getting more of a land grab or food control. So in China, they're trying to blame the U.S. government about their insect project in charge of that. Now, you know one thing I've learned? If you've learned this from my previous videos and studying history and the pattern of our government systems, you know one thing I've learned, especially during the war? The UN sources are right, or the Russian sources are right. And it's so dangerous that people who want to find the truth, they pick one side or the other. But you know one thing I've learned about both sides? They're telling the truth, yeah. and they're lying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you know what I'm thinking here? I think both are telling the truth and lying. Both are telling the truth and lying about, well, China has control over the food supply, but also the U.S. government or the U.N., uh, the U.S. government, they do have an insect project. And actually, it is very true. This is from Wired magazine. Title of their article, The U.S. Military is Hacking Insects with Virus DNA, Raising Fears of Dangerous New Bioweapons. Title of the article from Wired. That's not me. That's a title. Title. Stinking AI title of the article from Wired magazine. I read, quoted it word for word. <laughs> word for word from Wired magazine. Okay, Wired magazine, DARPA. That's the name you want to know, guys. The name that you never heard about before or they're hiding from you, I would suggest you to research that. It will, you will get a big wake-up call. DARPA. You ever heard of DARPA before? No, you haven't, right? They don't want you to know. DARPA's job, one of their jobs, word for word, Wired Magazine, okay? DARPA, the research arm of the U.S. military, is embarking on a radical new trial, but researchers warn that the technology could be turned into a biological weapon. What's going on right here? All of this has to do with saving the economy, helping the economy, helping the food supply, helping everything else of what you're eating. Because remember, uh, all of food life depends upon the insects as well, upon animal life as well. So then depending how well they control the insects or the animals, the more that we can have better chances of food survival. Isn't it interesting, though, that they make their insects? And these insects are not uh, normal insects. It's something they dabble with. Does the Bible warn you that will happen? Yeah. And guess what? These animals, these insects, don't touch the food supply. What if the elites are out there, they're hacking them in a way where the food supply is not harmed? But so that mankind can have a food survival process. Is that going to happen? Come on. Oh yeah. Come on. And these insects are not normal insects either. It looks like they've been dabbled with by scientists or something. Look at Revelation chapter 9. Look at verse 3. And there came out of these smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not, what? Hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree. But guess what? Science malfunctions, right? Have we learned, haven't we learned that throughout our history? Science malfunctions, something bad happens. So then, yay, they don't touch our food supply, but uh-oh, they're looking at you. Yeah. And they're licking their chops. And then you're like, what are you doing? And they aim for you. Look at verse 5. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months 
And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Look at these aren't normal locusts. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold. And their faces were as the faces of men. That's some weird looking insect. As if it had been hacked. As Wired Magazine said, the U.S. military is hacking insects with beep beep DNA, raising fears of dangerous new bioweapons. Look at Joel 2 and Revelation 6. Look at Revelation 6 and Joel 2. This is even worse. You ready for this? What's even worse in the tribulation, what God's going to do, is not only mankind... Mankind is going to think, yeah, these insects don't uh, harm our food supply, and they don't. But it backfires on them where they harm the human population, and eventually backfires on them where they do hit the food supply. They do. Look at Joel 2. Look at Joel 2. It's either that, or the Lord sends out a new brand of locusts. That will make sure that they harm the food supply. Which goes to show no matter how much mankind strives to hack into these insects so that food supply is not damaged, the Lord will make sure it backfires one way or the other. You don't believe me? Look at Joel 2, verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the what? Day of the Lord cometh. Okay, that's the day of the Lord. That's the end times tribulation. You know what's going to happen at that time? Read verse... Let's see right here. Read verse 14. 14. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God? Why is food mentioned right here? Because there's something going on. But before we continue reading that, look at the context of Revelation 6. Revelation 6. The famous passage of the third horseman apocalypse when he brings in famine. And look at the wording carefully right here. Revelation 6, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny. Let me know if I'm out of bounds. And three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou what? Hurt not the oil and the wine. Did you see that? Okay, this farmland or famine is considered oil and wine. Can we agree with that? So don't hurt the oil and wine. Do you remember Revelation 9? Hurt not the earth. So notice that there is an attention here of precious food commodity. Don't touch it. Don't damage it. Yeah. We need to protect it. You know what God does with their oil and wine? which refers to their food source. Can we agree with that? All right, go to Joel 2, verse 24. Verse 24. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. So God's saying he's going to restore it. Restore? That means he burned it. He took it away. Read verse 25. And I will restore to you. See that? The years that the what? Locust hath eaten. Oh, it backfired, the, the locust. Or the Lord sent a new locust, either or. Point is, it backfired. Keep reading. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. He sent that army. So notice right here, God's saying to the Jews, I'm going to restore your oil and wine, your food supply. That's what he said, right? Can we agree with that? He says, I'm going to restore it. Why is he going to restore it? Because the locust and the insects that he sent has eaten it up. So DARPA can work all they want and invest millions or how much money they want. Guess what? You're not going to outrun the Lord. Amen. You're never going to overpower God. Amen. DARPA, they're playing God so much. It's so laughable and it's... 
It's like, what are you guys thinking? They're trying to dabble with God's power and then pretend like they're the Almighty that they think they're the creator of the universe creating ex nihilo out of nothing. You know what I mean by that? For some of you who don't know, when God creates everything, it's like out of nothing, right? Title of the article from Financial Times where DARPA and U.S. military is dabbling with this. The U.S. military has a plan to make food from thin air. No, really. They're playing God, man. They're playing God. What a bunch of jokers. Let's close it off here. Genesis 47. Genesis 47. Remember what the New World Economic Forum said, which caused such a stir that they, I think, to my knowledge, they took down the video, or maybe they put it back up again, I don't know, but before they took down that video. But remember the video, they were talking about the vision of 2030. So in 2030, you will own what, remember? Oh, so you have no land grant. You own nothing by 2030. You own nothing by 2030. Okay, follow along with me here. People are thinking that they're making a comeback. They're making a victory with Ro uh, Roe v. Wade. And then people are opening their eyes concerning about the and then, you know, speaking out against the you know. So they're trying to, so there's a great revival and churches are gathering together and Trump is making a comeback and, oh, don't fool me, you know. <laughs> don't fool me. Why is all this happening, you know? CNN is getting, you see all these reporters getting kicked out, you know, Cuomo, you know, Brian Stelter, <laughs> that guy getting kicked out, you know, poor guy. And then Fauci, you know, stepping down and, oh, what's going on? What if Genesis chapter 47 talks about seven years, some people talk about seven years of famine, kind of like a seven-year tribulation. But then, before this seven-year tribulation, I kept moving the whiteboard, so please make sure it's centered right, okay? I'm sorry. In this seven-year tribulation, it's really funny that before it, before it, there is seven years of what? Plenty. There is seven years of plenty. So plenty is first for seven years, and then there's a seven-year famine afterwards. What am I talking about right here? If by 2030 you own nothing, and let's assume, I say assume, okay? It's not doctrinal truth. But assume 2030 is when you start the seven-year tribulation, when you own nothing. What's before seven year tribulation? Seven years of what? Minus seven years, what does that equal? What if next year is that time that people think, oh, there's a revival, we're in the year of plenty, Trump has brought back the economy, we're doing so well. Jared Kushner standing on top and getting along with the Arabs and Jews and then finally that treaty is getting together. The world is such a great place. Christian churches are getting along with Catholics because we won Roe v. Wade together. We won against the, uh, the current uh, control of the government against churches so that we can have religious freedom and uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Do you know what I mean right here? It's a trap. It's a trap. It's where people get so bedazzled and deceived that after that seven year plenty, boom, here comes the seven year tribulation. Look at Genesis 47. Title of the article from Forbes, Welcome to 2030. I own nothing, have no privacy, and life 
has never been better. <laughs> you wish. Look at Genesis 47. If this is the standard text to show that there's going to be a seven-year tribulation, then logically there should be a seven-year uh, seven plenty before. Yeah, that's true. Look at this verse. The Bible talks about the famine. Now, this should disturb you about the famine. Verse 13, And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan for the corn which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into the Pharaoh's house. Now, Egypt was a world power. America is the world power. And look how they fall on their knees in front of a Jewish elite. Verse, verse 16. And Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle if money fail. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses and for the flocks. Verse 18. When that year was ended, they came unto him the second year and said unto him, we proud Americans who are so powerful. We proud Egyptians where God bless Egypt. We will not hide it from my Lord, how that our money is spent. My Lord also hath our herds of cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my Lord but our freedom, our private property. I will die by the Constitution, but our bodies and our lands. <laughs> Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread because the Constitution can be interpreted in 50 other different languages. And if you understand the historical context, that's not what it means by private property. And we will be servants unto Pharaoh the Antichrist and give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. And Joseph, who is a type of Christ and a type of Antichrist, yeah. bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. Let's close with a word of prayer. Let that be a lesson to all of you. It's going to happen. If that happened before, it's going to happen again. What men learn from history is that men never learn from history. God, my Father, I pray that today's teaching has been a blessing to the hearers. Make us see how foolish and wicked this society is and see the, where uh, human pattern, human nature is heading toward and we don't follow its footsteps. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.